In today's video, we will continue with our cybersecurity project in a cloud environment with Microsoft Sentinel and investigate cybersecurity incident in the portal. I will show you how to start incident investigation, where to find additional details about potential threat and give you some useful tips for incident response. If you don't have Microsoft Sentinel created, make sure to check out my previous video where we set up our lab environment. Once you have it, you should see new incidents in threat management tab. Actually, for me, it's been quite some time since I've set up Microsoft Sentinel. Therefore, I had to change the time range. Do you see this little clock right over here? If you click on it, you have the ability to see incidents for the past 24 hours, 14 days or any custom range you are interested in. Before we jump into the incident investigation, let's see what else is available to us on this dashboard. Starting from the left corner, you can manually create an incident. That's awesome functionality that every same solution should have. It's especially useful if you are proactively hunting for threats and you found something concerning in the logs that needs further attention. You can create new incident, give it appropriate title, describe your findings or assign this task to analyst. Once the incident is created, you could even add logs to it and give analyst even more details. I will show you later in this video how to do exactly that. Going back to the portal, the most important button is right over here. Actions. At the moment it's grayed out, but once you select any incident, the action button will light up. Now comes an important decision to be made. Which incidents do you start working on? At our environment we have three different incidents created at the same time. One key factor that we need to consider is the incident severity. In this case we have two medium and one with high priority indicating potential major impact on the organization. Therefore we will start with the high priority incident. But that's not always the rule. Working at operation center it's a bit more complicated. Incidents will be created and picked up based on different factors as well. For example, newly created high priority incident for phishing attempt might not be as critical as 10 medium incidents created 2 hours or 4 hours from the same asset. You also might finish investigation for a specific host or user and more incidents related to this issue are open. As you want to be as efficient as possible and save your colleague time as well, it might be better to take those incidents since you already know all the contacts and resolve them in a couple of minutes. You can also just assign them to yourself and resolve them later. There are many considerations, but always keep in mind that you are trying to protect assets and you should evaluate potential impact this incident could have on organization and decide based on that. Once you made your decision, you can click on action, assign incident to yourself and change the status to active. This way everyone knows that you are currently working on the incident. Hit apply and incident will be updated. Ok, that covers the basics, but how you get more information? Well, some is provided to you once you select the incident itself. Our incident is called Solarigate Network Beacon and it identifies a match across different data feeds for domains IOCs related to SolarWind incident. Maybe you have heard about it in the past. It was a huge event in 2020, affecting thousands of organizations including the US government. We are actually provided with two links as references where the threat is explained in more depth and you will find plenty of articles and videos regarding this. Let's go back to the portal and see what else is available to us. Under the evidence section you can see that we have 6 events, 6 alerts and 0 bookmarks. More importantly, below are the entities related to this incident. We have one IP address and one domain linked here. If the information is not enough for you to decide you can click on view full details. This will move you to a new tab with much better overview. On the left it's basically the same information but in the middle you can see incident timeline. Incident in Microsoft Sentinel can be created from alerts. For example you could have multiple login failures for user followed by successful login indicating a potential brute force attack. After that antivirus was disabled another alert and so on. In here we have also multiple alerts. Again more information will be provided to you. But the most important part is right over here. You can view 
relevant events that triggered specific alert. Let's click on that and Rolox will be displayed to us. Let's expand it by clicking on this arrow and see what is inside. Here is time when the event occurred. We know it was generated by Cisco product. The DNS query was for domain abs bmcloud.com from source IP 17.81.146.1 and it was successful. This is already enough information for you to decide if this thread is legitimate because domains avsvmcloud.com are used for possible second stage payload to move laterally in the organization or exfiltrate data. Therefore, our next steps is to identify all the assets that could be compromised and isolate them from the rest of the network as soon as possible. And for that, we will use hunting query. There is actually extensive article covering this topic on official Microsoft site, where you can also find this query. This said, we have it also inside Microsoft Sentinel. So let's check it out. Let me actually create a new tab and navigate back to Microsoft Sentinel. From the homepage, select hunting. From here on hunting, and in the middle of the screen, you can see Solarigate inventory check. Again, if you select it, more details will be presented to you. On the right, you can see the query itself. And below, you have the option to run the query. Let's press it and immediately, you should see that we have three different results. You can see more details about them by clicking on view results right here. This will open another tab with the raw logs inside. If you look closely at host custom entity, it's clear that two additional computers are affected. Therefore, we will take those events and link them to our current investigation. It's very simple. Click on this box and it will automatically select all the events for you. Now you can press the add bookmark button. Let's give it a name first. Entities are automatically assigned. Therefore, we can click on create. After that, we have to move back to hunting and change our tab to bookmarks. They are saved over here. As we want them all inside our incident, we will select all three of them and navigate to incident actions. And here, select add to existing incident. I have just one incident correctly in active state, which is related to SolarWind. Let's click on that and add bookmark to our incident. Ok, now we should see our bookmarks in our incident. So, let's confirm. I will go back to my previous tab, close the logs window, and here you go. Right in the middle, there are three new bookmarks added. More importantly, information about affected hosts were linked as entities. That's pretty much it when it comes to incident investigation. Let's finish it by writing a comment about what we did. Again, nothing complicated. You can simply click on activity log and write comment right over here. Something like this should be sufficient enough. After that, you need to isolate the host. That could be responsibility of different team and you would have to escalate them this incident. Or it could be also up to you. In such cases, there are automation in place integrated with Microsoft Sentinel, allowing you to isolate host from network with single click of the button. But that's for another time, as this is everything I wanted to show you when it comes to incident handling. We will close things up by closing the incident itself. In cases where the threat is considered as legitimate, you would close incident as true positive. You can do that by changing the status from active to closed. Classification reason will be true positive and you have also option to put comment inside. Let me put something in here and here you go. Hit apply and the incident is successfully closed with a valid reason for closing. Remember, there are additional two incidents giving you plenty room to practice incident investigation yourself. I will also leave a link in the comments where you can find correct solution in case you get stuck. That's everything from me. Thank you for watching. And if you learn something new, please consider subscribing and like for more content in the future.